Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I own the Water East Store and the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Today we're talking about how to install a Water Saver 75 high efficiency reverse osmosis drinking water system like this one here. Very easy to install, but there are a few steps involved. If you're not 100% sure how these systems work, check out my video up here before we get started. So um, the first thing you need to think about is where you're going to install this. The most common place is in, right underneath the kitchen sink, in the cupboards underneath. Um, that's, uh, that's a good place. That'll give you the best flow coming out of the faucet because it does have a dedicated faucet for the, the drinking water. Um, another option is underneath the kitchen sink. If you have an unfinished basement or at least unfinished ceiling right underneath the kitchen, then it can be installed in the basement. Um, but just keep in mind, the further you get away from that faucet, the more tubing you run, the slower the flow coming out of the faucet. The next thing to think about is the manifold itself um, can be in, will be hung from screws on the inside of the cabinet or again if it's in the basement it can go on the wall. Um, there's also the tank. The tank can be installed vertically as it sits here or it can go horizontally too. So those are some of the options you can. The other thing is are you going to be connecting this to a fridge? So there's a, a link below that has a fitting that uh, you can put a T in the line going to the faucet so that you can run it over to the fridge. So again, you've got the same reverse osmosis drinking water coming out of your fridge for your drinking water and of course for your ice cubes. Okay, so there's a number of components and uh, although the manifold comes assembled just the way you see it here, it's got the filters in it already right out of the box, um, what you think, need to think about is the different components uh, that, uh, that go with that. So let's look at the tank first of all. So the tank has um, comes with a shutoff valve like this and uh, so it's threaded. This nipple on the end here is threaded so what you need is some Teflon tape and um, you run that over the threads so you can hold it down with your thumb and then wrap it around going away from you like that. I usually give it three turns and then you can screw on the fitting. You don't, obviously want to make sure you don't want to cross thread it. And you tighten it down pretty much hand tight. You don't want to break it off because it is plastic, but obviously you want to make sure that it doesn't leak. All right, so now the tank's prepared. So the next thing we have to think about is, is the faucet. So a hole needs to be drilled at the kitchen sink for the faucet. Now if you have a laminate countertop with a stainless steel type uh, sink with a flange around it, you can drill a hole in the stainless steel um, for the faucet. Um, if you've got some of the, the, the newer composite type sinks, um, there's a knockout plug at the back. If you look underneath the, the, um, the flange around the sink, there's a knockout plug that you can just knock that out and that makes the hole for the faucet. It's a 5 8 inch hole. And um, if you have granite countertops, then you need to get a diamond encrusted drill bit to drill that granite. Uh, same with quartz. All right, so that, uh, that's the faucet. Now when you install the faucet, obviously you've drilled the hole and then uh, these two pieces the chrome piece goes on the top, rubber washer goes underneath, so then you'd position that into place, then from underneath you'd put this big washer, put the lock washer, and the nut. You tighten that up, make sure you position however you want, turn the handle on the left side or the right side, and, uh, and then your faucet is ready uh, to be connected, except for this is the fitting that uh, once you've tightened it down, then this fitting will go on the end. And again, you can put the um, Teflon tape on there. Hold it in your left hand and then go around the threaded portion with the Teflon tape. Again, I usually give it three turns. Oops. And then you can tighten this fitting on. Of course, this is going to be under the sink already. And, uh, and tighten that up and then the tubing is going to connect to that. Now if you're not, all the connections on these systems are all made with John Guest type um, fittings, fittings like this, and if you're not sure how to use those fittings, I have a great video up here that explains how to use uh, quick connect fittings. All right, uh, one, one more note I'd like to make is if you are installing the um, reverse osmosis system under the kitchen sink or in a very finished area, you probably want to install a leak stop. Again, I've got a great uh, 
video up here that uh, talks about the leak stop system and uh, that way if, if for some reason any leak develops it would shut off the water going to the unit and minimize uh, any damage that might be caused uh, by the water. Okay so the next thing we have to think about is the drain connection. So underneath the the kitchen sink or like I say if you're doing it in the basement um, you need to find a, a drain line like this that you can connect to. So it can either be connected vertically or horizontally. It needs to be connected before the trap now, if you're connecting it horizontally, uh, vertically, then you'd want to position the drain saddle valve as low as possible. And that gives you the least likelihood of, it, uh, of noise. Uh, when the water is draining, it might make some noise, and the least noise would be generated by keeping it as low as possible. If you run it horizontally, uh, that can work too. Just make sure that when you drill the hole, you drill it on a bit of an upward angle. And that way, again, it minimizes the noise. But wherever you position the drain saddle, it has to be above the trap. Once you've decided where you're gonna mount the saddle for the drain, then um, you drill a hole, you remove the paper from the back of this, position that around the hole, and then you attach these two fittings on either side, like that, around the hole. Put these two bolts in and tighten them up. And you want to tighten them enough that it doesn't leak, but you don't want to over tighten them that it could crack the pipe or, cr or crack this, uh, this unit. I mean, you can tighten it a lot to get there. And then this is the cap that goes on top. And you would, whoops, like that. And then you'd run the tubing inside here and tighten it up. So uh, it comes with these uh, little plugs in here. So you'd pull those out to do the connections. And, uh, and the, it's, the unit is quite well labeled. I don't know if you can see it or not in the camera, but here it says faucet. Here it says to the tank. Over here, where is it here? It says feed. And up at the top here, it says drain. So it tells you where all those connections are. And the tubing that comes with it is actually color coded, which matches these. Uh, so it, it gives you a great indicator of which tubing goes where. To get water to the system, we need to install the cold water supply faucet adapter. Now, how these, how these things work is uh, you just disconnect the water line that's going to the cold water at your kitchen faucet. If you're not sure which one's cold and which one's hot, just run some lukewarm water and then just feel them. You'll feel the hot side is obviously hot and the cold side is the one that you want to disconnect and install this. So you just, just disconnect the, the line that goes up to the cold water supply and this gets uh, put in between as a kind of a T and this is going to give the supply to the unit. All right, so now we've got um, all the components uh, prepared. So all we do is hook up the tubing and uh, install the unit. Once the unit's been installed, you want to make sure you turn the water back on and uh, check for leaks. So once you see that there's no leaks, then you can open up this valve here. This is closed and this is open. You could open up this valve. I only initially open it up just partially so the water flows through slowly and again you watch to see if there's any leaks forming. Now the tank, this is the shutoff for the tank and this is in the open position and this this way is in the closed position. So you want to start off with that tank closed and, uh, and then you want to start filling the system. Once you see that there's no leaks then um, you can continue to filling the system and you can open this up all the way and then what you're going to do is you're going to open up the faucet at the kitchen sink. And uh, once you see water slowly trickling out of the faucet, you would close it. And then you'd go back and you'd open up the tank and let the system fill. Now, it takes about two hours or so for it to, to totally fill the system and bring it up to pressure. So initially you might be disappointed how slow the water flows out of this faucet, but give it time. Once it's, it's totally filled, then you'll see the flow is fast. In fact, it's very, very fast coming out of this faucet. Um, most common size glasses will only take about five seconds to fill um, with the flow coming out of here. And if you ran the water line to the fridge, also be sure to check those connections for potential leaks. Once the system is totally filled and totally pressurized, you get good flow out of here. Let the water run and totally empty the tank. 
And uh, so what you're doing now is you're flushing the filters. You might get some gray water coming out of that, and that's the carbon fines coming out of the, the filter. So once you've totally drained the tank, again, let it fill, take a couple hours, and then drain it again. You want to flush the filters three times. The membrane in here has a preservative in it, and you want to make sure you get rid of that. And if you haven't done so already, just make sure you mount this inside the cabinet, or like I say, if you're it's putting in the basement, make sure you mount it on the wall. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, you'll really enjoy this other video up here that talks about water usage and how little wa water is actually wasted when you're using a Water Saver 75 high efficiency reverse osmosis drinking water system. And that's it. If you like what you saw today, please click the subscribe button. That way you'll be notified all new videos that become available on this channel. If you'd like some more information, go to our websites, either thewaterestore.com or thewaterstoremidland.com. And again, I'm Gary the Water Guy from the Water Store in Midland, Ontario. Thanks for watching.